Welcome to a Pacific Northwest theme park review from the Disneyland Beat. This past week, we made our first visit to Seattle's largest theme park, Wild Waves Theme and Water Park. The history of this park is somewhat convoluted, but not unusual. It started as a family park, the Enchanted Village, in 1977, and a water park, Wild Waves, was added as a second gate in 1981. It was sold to corporations in the 1990s and was even part of the Six Flags portfolio in the early 2000s, though it was never an official Six Flags park. It has changed ownership twice since then, as recently as 2016, and it's now owned by a corporation that owns several smaller parks across the country. At various times in its past, you could get a ticket to the dry park separately from the water park, but in 2017, the system was removed, and it now has one ticket and one gate. In 2002, the park was noted for having more than 25 major attractions and employing over 1,000 employees. We very much enjoyed our day at Wild Waves, but that was not the park we got to see. As you make your way into the park at the main gate, you enter right at the water park section at the wave pool. The water park had several large water play areas and a fairly large but shallow and tame wave pool. Alongside this was an area with around 10 large water slides. The coolest might be the Raging River Ride, which has a ton of pools and slides you can descend. Most were fun but fairly tame and all required a raft or a mat. The water park is nice but compact and kind of small by national standards. Nonetheless, it's one of the largest in the Pacific Northwest. We spent most of our time at Wild Waves in the Dry Park, which was once called the Enchanted Village. In the heart of this park, Celebration Square, we were able to find some remnants of the original theming, though calling the place a theme park is a stretch. It was kind of sad to see a generic single rail safari car ride around the ruins of what must have been a magical storybook village. The park has quite a few flat rides and spinners. We noticed while doing our homework that the latest company to buy the park retired some five to six rides in 2020. We don't know if this was for safety concerns or if they just needed to liquidate a little bit, but it did feel like half of the attractions were either not operating or missing on our visit. But most of the major attractions were running. The newest, just a few years old, was a drop tower called the Brain Drain. It's not the most intense drop tower we've ever been on, but it was a whole lot of fun. The hang gliders were nice, and so was the antique carousel, which dates back to 1904 and has been in service in the Puget Sound since the 20s. Like a lot of things in this park, it could use a refurbishment, but it's still a very nice three-row carousel with every horse a leaper. The first major coaster that we rode was an aero corkscrew looper that was moved here in the 90s from a now defunct park called Rocky Point in Rhode Island. The same coaster style used to exist at Knott's Berry Farm, a loop followed by two corkscrews. This one is pretty smooth and it's in great shape. The lines were pretty short throughout the day. Crowds were fairly light, especially outside of the water park. The staff were pretty great and did their jobs and focused on safety, despite some pretty tough work conditions. For whatever reason, it was clear they were understaffed. In many cases, rides needed an extra person or two assigned to them to increase efficiency. And no ride seemed to have a microphone. The staff were shouting their pre-show safety instructions at the top of their lungs. And the rides did go down throughout the day, but that's pretty normal. There was a clearly separate area themed to the Old West Territory, though there wasn't too much of it really, just a few decomposing wagons. The bumper cars in this area were fun and they had a shoot the shoots water ride like I had not seen since the 1990s called Lumberjack Falls. These rides have a fun drop and make a pretty big splash, so that was fun. The Zampiri a wild mouse coaster was not operating, unfortunately. They also had a huge swinging thrill ride called the Timber Axe that was kind of like a big pirate ship ride without the pirate ship. It was intense, maybe the most intense ride in the park. The park's pirate ship, on the other hand, was closed. The biggest ride in the park was its SNS wooden roller coaster, Timberhawk Ride of Prey. In fact, this is the biggest coaster in Washington State, if you can believe it. This 2003 coaster is a good family coaster, big but not too intense, and the ride was a lot smoother than the slightly rickety appearance might suggest. Timberhawk was probably our favorite ride in the park. It was a really nice coaster, and we had a really nice afternoon on a cool Pacific Northwest day at Wild Waves. We enjoyed the park. It was clean, and in particular, the wooded areas of the park are very attractive, but it will be much more fun once they get the entire park up and running again. The food was okay, chicken tenders, pizza fries, things like that, 
The park's main sponsor, maybe the only one that we saw, was Coca-Cola, and Coke products are everywhere. The food and everything about the park, it's really overpriced, but at the same time, we noticed that season passes and season food plans were really affordable, like cheaper than visiting twice type of prices. To us, the obvious thing is the park's identity is not that clear in several ways. It struggles to be both a water park and amusement park and to find a balance between the two. And the layers of its past are evident. A one-time family and storybook park with a petting zoo and lots of stage shows that was then bought by a Six Flags type operation that closed much of that and brought in a few big coasters and then sold it off. We hope that the new owners and the management company that they've hired to run the place not only invest in refurbishment and new attractions, but design and cohesive theming as well. Wild Waves has had several heydays in its past, and it has lots of potential for the future.